Welcome to Three Questions With, a program by the Latino News Network produced in collaboration with CAN TV. LNN is dedicated to best serving Hispanic Latinos with local multimedia news and information websites across the country that include Illinois Latino News, a statewide community focused initiative. Three Questions With is a public affairs program elevating the voices and visibilities of matters most important to the Hispanic Latino community by speaking with community and industry thought leaders on the social determinants of health and democracy. I'm Hugo Balta, publisher of LNN and your host. Diversity, equity, and inclusion allow broader perspectives to be integrated when developing new ideas, particularly in the performing arts, because they shape public ideas about cultural identity and expose audiences to conflicts and discourses they might not otherwise encounter in their daily lives. The Chicago Latino Theater Alliance is a transformative cultural engine helping drive our local Latino theater community to a more prominent level. The organization is needed for our city as we wrestle with cultural equity and inclusion issues. CLADA's signature program, Destinos, the Chicago International Latino Theater Festival, kicks off for a new season this month, showcasing Chicago's Latino theater artists and companies alongside top Latino artists from the United States and Latin America leading the foundation's mission to propel the city's local Latino theater community to a more prominent level and increase Latino representation in Chicago theater is Jorge Valdivia, executive director of CLATA. He is our guest today. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hugo, for uh, your invitation. Absolutely. So let's start learning more about the work you lead with the Chicago Latino Theater Alliance its goal of building a stronger foundation for future Latino artists to thrive and grow. Yeah, um, so a little bit about, about CLATA, the Chicago Latino Theater Alliance. We're an advocacy organization for Latino theater uh, organizations in the Chicago land area. Uh, we've got three pillars of programming. We uh, uh, just launched this year Inicios, which is a playwright festival uh, dedicated to uh, amplifying the work of uh, local uh, Latin playwrights. Uh, it's called Inicios, uh, the Chicago uh, Latin uh, Playwright Festival. Uh, it happened earlier this year, um, and thankfully, it was very successful. We were at three different venues, and we had three amazing panelistas who reviewed the entire process. Um, yeah, I can't speak any more highly of it. Uh, and aside from that, we also have another pillar of our programming, which is Destino Sal Aire. Destino Sal Aire is a free family festival that is intended to highlight physical theater and really performing arts. Uh, that's really, I think, the area where we're able to sort of flex our performing arts muscle. So that it's not just theater, physical theater, but also other performing arts disciplines. So there's music. Um, there are uh, the human statues that we get to see in different cities whenever we travel for photo ops. But that also allows us to hire physical theater artists. Um, and we just had our uh, highest attendance earlier this year as well. Um, we uh, had Destino Salaire, which was at the National Museum of Mexican Arts uh, Plaza. We had uh, about 300 people in attendance. And then finally, uh, I think everyone knows CLATA for Destinos, the Chicago International Latino Theater Festival, which is a festival that celebrates local Latino theater gems, but also uh, allows us uh, to explore theater from a national and international uh, perspective by bringing together theater productions produced locally, nationally, and internationally. Great, and we'll be talking about this year's Destinos in a moment. Yeah. I wanted to dive in a little bit about what you mentioned with Inicios and really that first pillar for Glata. Mm -hmm. Media has such a powerful role in shaping how people view the world, especially, right. you know, we're talking about Latinos, but <laughs> non-Latinos um, perceptions of who Latinos are is mostly um, uh, shaped by mass media. And certainly I've been very constructively critical in the need of more diversity, equity, and inclusion in, in the news uh, media. Right. Tell us why it's so important for CLATA to, to spearhead initiatives for Latinos to be able to tell their own stories. 
Yeah, I think this is a perfect example of when our values align uh, in different areas, right? You just talked about how it's important for diversity, inclusion, and equity to be a priority in newsrooms. Uh, I could say the same for theater. Unfortunately, there's a huge disparity when it comes to theater. I think a lot of us know, and I think it's uh, across the board in the arts, uh, if we look at the arts as a whole, that um, that gap in equity exists. It's 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 noticeable. We've known this. BIPOC organizations, Latino organizations, uh, Black-led organizations have been saying this for, for many years. And when you look at the funding portfolio, you know, the way that funds are distributed um, in any major city across the country, what you're looking at is the museums of contemporary arts, the symphony centers, the opera houses, uh, the, the museums that are dedicated to modern art. Those are normally eating up somewhere around 70% of the funding and then uh, over 70%. And so that leaves um, a smaller piece of the pie, cl- much less than 30% actually, that uh, BIPOC-led organizations are left to feel sort of, there's, it creates the sense of scarcity. And that scarcity mindset is, I think, very counterproductive and it can be dangerous, I think. Um, I think it, uh, it hurts us. And so I think that, uh, What needs to happen is we need to have a conversation around equity and funding. And so that begins with uh, philanthropists, with foundations, and having that become part of a national discourse. Um, And because of all of this, uh, this is why uh, Galata founded, Galata was founded, right, to help uh, build more visibility for Latinos on stages across the, across Chicago. Um, and so our work is committed to the Chicago area. We are committed to helping amplify our stories, our narrative, so that more people who look like us, and when I say us, I'm referring to people who look like you and me, but I'm also pe- referring to people who perhaps are um, identify as Afro-Latinos. Uh, I'm also referring to people who might be um, Latin and uh, genderqueer. So it is really, our mission is to really sort of capture the full um, diaspora and narrative of what it means to be Latine in the USA, right? And so this is why we were created. Uh, we established the um, Inicios uh, Chicago Latine uh, Playwright Festival to really help amplify the stories. When you look at plays that are uh, actually written, it's uh, the statistic. I don't have the number right now because this week, I apologize. I've had so many different numbers. <laughs> Our playbill is about to uh, be rele- be published. So you can imagine how many different numbers and dates and, and prices I've had to look at. The statistic, though, of plays that actually make it to full production is quite sad. And it's not 50%. It's not 40%. It's not 30%. It's under 20%, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And so we founded this um, Playwright Festival, Inicios, with the goal of helping um, get the word out, hey, there are amazing stories being written here in the Chicagoland area by Latino, Latina, Latine playwrights. Let's do something about it. This is what they wrote. We uh, we host live readings at different locations throughout the Chicagoland area. And this is, uh, as we say in Spanish, un granito de arena to help counter uh, counteract the fact that uh, we're not, our stories are not being produced, our stories are not being told. Un granito de arena, but very important work uh, that leads to larger work. And I think you made a great point. Um, often when we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, there needs to be more diversity, equity, and inclusion within our own group. You mentioned Afro-Latinos, you mentioned mm-hmm. LGBTQ. Some of those stories are, are also being missed mm-hmm. and uh, in, in the general um, telling of our stories. Let's now pivot to, to the second question, focusing on Destinos. The, the six-week run begins on September 28. It's an annual event, as you mentioned, that showcases Ch- Chicago's Latino theater artists and companies alongside with mm-hmm. Latino artists from, from across the United States and Latin America. What can we look forward to this year? Poquito de todo for everyone. Uh, that's <laughs> what I'm going to say. I'm going to keep on saying that. Um, there's a little bit of uh, of something for everyone to be honest with you, and I say that because I'm very excited. Uh, this is the most ambitious des- Destinos uh, festival that we've ever produced. It's 17 productions, right? Um, it is 10 different venues. Uh, it's seven weeks, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Oh, gosh. I'll start with uh, international 
then we'll talk about national, and then we'll focus on the heart of the festival, which is local theater. Um, so uh, we've got La Tia Mariela by a company called Sastun from originally from uh, Yucatan, Mexico. The Yucatan Pen Peninsula is perhaps uh, known for its amazing weather. But another uh, reason that you should know about this area is because this is where Conchi León, an extraordinary play, uh, acclaimed playwright, Mexican playwright, uh, is originally from. And so she's made it her mission to help amplify the stories of Yucatan, Yucatan uh, culture. Right. And so you see that interwoven into her stories. Latina Mariela is a hilarious uh, take on really uh, a very dark moment uh, among primas. They get a phone call. Their tia Mariela has died. But what ensues is, I mean, it's just it's hilarious. I actually had the chance to see this play years ago. And so this will be at the National Museum of Mexican Art. It'll be three days, October 3rd through the 5th. And I just cannot emphasize how uh, amazing this play is. Conchi León, honestly, anything de Conchi León, uh, I'm a huge fan, in, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> but I've been following her career for quite some time. So I'm glad that she's forming part of Destinos finally. Wonderful. And now, uh, so that's international. Yeah. So now national. National. So we've got quite a few things uh, cooked up. So Prieto is a play by, written by Yosima Reyes. Yosima Reyes is, um, he's a poet. Uh, he is um, uh, a writer. He is an artist. And he does a beautiful job of weaving um, po his poetry into this play, which is really an autobiographical uh, story about his experience as a child who um, is really sort of trying to uh, accept himself as someone who is dark skinned, but also queer. And so there's a lot of different, it's the intersection of these different sort of um, identities, right? And it's, uh, this is hailing from San Jose, California. It'll be taking place at Shakespeare Theater uh, running October 20th through the 22nd. Um, I honestly cannot emphasize how my staff had a chance to see the play. I um, I had them see it first. Uh, I have not watched the the link to be honest with you, but that's the one that they're probably most excited about. Mm, excellent. Okay, so now uh, local. What 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 are we going to be oh, seeing? Oh, geez, local. You know, there are a few different things. So I'm excited to announce that this year. Subsex, uh, Subtext uh, Studio Theater is joining the festival for the first time. The American Dream is a play that will be taking place at Madison Street Theater in Oak Park, and that's running October 5th through the 29th. And what uh, we had a chance to meet with uh, the playwright. We also had a chance to meet with Subsex, Subtext uh, Studio Theater. And what, I, what really drew us to this uh, play is I think that when we talk about the American dream, um, a lot of us grew up uh, with that dream, this narrative of why our parents, grandparents, our ancestors came to this country. And we've heard about the struggles, right? Um, it's something that we can all associate with. And I think this story captures that, right? It's, uh, it's sad, um, but it's also powerful. And I think that uh, it's a story that we need to be reminded of, especially in a time when we're uh, when we're seeing so many refugees coming to this country. A lot of us perhaps need to be reminded of why our ancestors ancestors came to this country, because it, it, I think we're living in a very divisive climate. Um, we've heard this over and over again, how our country is made of immigrants. I think the American uh, the American dream, which is part of this genus this year, reminds us of why how this country was built, who it was built by and why we're here. I think it's wonderful. I mean, first of all, you're absolutely right, right? We're, we're in the midst of a, of a crisis here in the city of Chicago with just a volume of, of migrants that have been coming here, primarily um, being, being bused from, from Texas and then yeah. uh, seeing many of them sleeping in, in police uh, yes. headquarters or uh, in, in tents in, in uh, many different areas. So, so very relevant. Um, I love the fact that not many of us will have the opportunity to travel to Mexico. So to be, right. so for Clata to bring Mexico here or even um, uh, plays from across the country, you mentioned right. San Jose, that's wonderful to, to get that robust diversity of different perspectives and storytelling that of course it's very important to elevate and celebrate what we have locally, but what Clata's doing in importing uh, 
um, such artists and, and um, incredible rich storytelling is wonderful. So I, I certainly um, uh, commend you for that. I think, Thank you. Uh, tell me a little bit, I mean, from listening to you and what we've highlighted as just one, uh, three of, of what we're going to be seeing during Destinos, yeah. The, the process in selecting, very methodical. Tell us a little bit about what, what sparks your interest in choosing each yeah. year uh, what will be highlighted in Destinos. Yeah, you know, that, that's a very good question. I think that, you know, first and foremost, we want a very transparent process. So there is an open call that happens. And so we receive those, those submissions. We go through them. And uh, that's one part of the process. I think the other two is really getting out there um, and... Uh, making sure that wherever there is a theater showcase, that you're out there, that we're out there and uh, trying to consume as much theater as possible. Um, and also, I think it's important to sort of reflect on what's already been done and um, and try to find something that is perhaps a little bit um, different. And, you know, that happens whenever you're you're traveling on a national or international level. Um, in this case, one thing that we did uh, I, I can tell you that we had a conversation in the office about, you know, what is different about Destinos this year. Sometimes those things uh, can't be um, planned, if you will. You might, you know, when we think about, is there a theme? Sometimes those things kind of happen organically, right? And so um, I think with this year's Destinos, um, I can tell you that we looked at once everything sort of fell into place and we uh, selected, made the final selections. One thing that we noticed is that I, uh, this year's Destinos is, is, is about really um, diversity. Um, some of the cast, uh, uh, there's everything from, you know, um, uh, plays that are, are, are talking about the stigma against, against indigenous people, right? And there are plays where you'll, you will see Afro-Latinos and then you have other plays where um, uh, the LGBT experience of Latinos is elevated. So, you know, uh, I didn't mention Spotlight Weekend, which is a very important weekend. That's our opening week. We've got La Carne Asada 2, uh, the seasoning. Uh, we've got uh, Ratas de Dos Patas uh, uh, presenting uh, Rata Gigante, Ratas Gigante, Que Dramáticas, which is a telenovela and musical review. Um, it's a hilarious sort of take on everything, every novella that you, the, 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 the fight scenes and the drama of the novellas infused with musicals. <laughs> and so, uh, this is by a small, um, LGBT, uh, theater company, Latino theater company from the South side of Chicago called Cabaret Parodia, which I think a lot of people did not know existed. Um, and then we've got, for the first time ever, Physical Theater is uh, collaborating with uh, Galata and present, presenting Scratch Night. Scratch Night is basically a work in progress, and uh, but it's physical theater. So if you are kind of scratching your head trying to make sense of what that looks like, we invite you to come out and check it out. <laughs> All of this is happening at Steppenwolf Theater, uh, to September 28th through October 1st. And so um, I know that that's probably a long answer, but I think it's sort of, I, I, I hope it gives you some insight into how um, sometimes it, you know, while there are, there's a lot of work that goes into it, there is really, um, it, we don't approach it with a, the goal of sort of saying, this year it's going to be about this. But I stand proud by the, the plays that form part of, um, of the lineup this year. Um, and I'm excited to see what Chicago thinks about it. Well, you have a lot to be excited about. I'm looking forward to seeing as many uh, of, of what's being showcased as possible again September 28th. You're watching Three Questions with Jorge Valdivia, Executive Director of the Chicago Latino Alliance, Theater Alliance. When we come back, we're going to get a little personal with Jorge and learn what motivates the passion that he has for the work that he does and learn a little bit about his upbringing. Jamira Alexander inviting you to join me for the public narrative a word with my very special guests David Peterson of the A. Philip Randolph Pullman Porter Museum and Melvin Thompson of Resolute Consulting Group. Join the conversation Thursday September 21st at 7 p.m. on CAN-TV cable channel 19 and streaming on CAN-TV.org and CAN-TV Plus app. Experience the power of community television. 
We've been talking to Jorge Valdivia, Executive Director of the, the Chicago Latino Theater Alliance and CLADA's mission of providing development opportunities for Chicago area Latino playwrights, directors, and actors, as well as a preview of Destinos, theatrical works from Colombia, Mexico, San Jose, New York, and right here in Chicago, we can all enjoy this season. Now let's learn a little bit more about you, Jorge, the personal side. You're a resident of Pilsen. Mm -hmm. Tell us what inspires the work that you do today and, and maybe something about your upbringing because you've been working in the arts and that intersection with community for a very long time. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you. So a little about myself. I grew up in uh, La Viguita on the south side of Chicago. Uh, my mother was an aspiring singer and songwriter. And so I uh, remember her belonging to a committee of uh, a, they, they call themselves Comité Arte Mexico, aspiring artists, singers, songwriters, performers. So I had I was surrounded by artists my entire uh, youth uh, as a child, and so I just remember um, them coming together, having meals, celebrating and and singing, rehearsing. And my mother, uh, during her downtime, she would write songs. Um, and I just like grew up fascinated with uh, the arts. Um, as a child, watching my mother cook and sing, um, I think that really sort of opened the window to what the arts could inspire in people. And so I later in life had the opportunity to work at the National Museum of Mexican Art. I was a uh, general manager of Radio Arte uh, 90.5 FM, which was a small community broadcast station, small but mighty. Uh, a lot of amazing people came out of Radio Arte, and then I became the performing arts director. I uh, oversaw the performing arts programming. I was able to grow the programming into seven cities and do programming on a uh, local, national, and international level. Eventually, that would lead me to Glata, where I'm at now, and I've always been fascinated with uh, how art can really help elevate the stories of who we are, our lived experiences as Latinos, and the other intersection of those identities uh, that make up uh, who we are really as, as full human beings. And so I've always been fascinated by that, and that's why I do what I do, because as we say in Spanish, lo hacemos con amor. <laughs> and look, you're absolutely right. Art is often uh, a bridge that mm -hmm. helps people not only um, be entertained, but also understand one another. Yes. And especially when you're from different community, whether it's ethnicity, mm -hmm. um, race, gender, sexual orientation. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, that I like to do with guests is learn more about them because you're, you're not only inspirational, based on the work that you do, the important work that you do, but you're also aspirational. And it's important for uh, especially young people to, 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 to learn more about people like you. For someone that is an aspiring actor, a playwright, or, or like yourself, be involved in leading that effort, mm -hmm. what advice can you give them? I think that, uh, wow, that's such a, it's a, in some ways, it's a simple yet loaded question. Advice is always like so... You know, how do you give the right advice? The only thing I could say is that um, there is nothing more powerful than being authentic and telling your story. Um, to me, as simple as it may, that may be, I think it's a powerful message because earlier you asked why um, it's important for us to tell our stories. What I didn't say then that I think is important to say now is that it's important because for me, a lot of the work that I have done has been with first voice institutions. And it's our responsibility to ourselves individually to tell our own stories. Because if we don't, someone else will uh, tell our stories for us. And sometimes uh, when that happens, they take credit for our lived experience, for the things that we've accomplished and for ultimately for who we are in our culture. And so that in itself is cultural appropriation and we see it happening over and over again, right? So my advice to someone young, younger is uh, be authentic, be yourself and tell your story and don't let, ever let anyone tell your story for you. Authenticity and storytelling. Jorge, thank you so much for your time. Hugo, thank you. You've been watching Three Questions with Jorge Valdivia, Executive Director of Chicago Latino Theater Alliance. Right after the break, 
la última palabra, my final thoughts on the need for diversity in the arts. And now, la última palabra, the last word on the need for diversity in the arts. Art has a significant influence on our way of life and culture. Learning about diverse cultures via performing arts like ballet, opera, movies, and theater is one of the best ways to gain a new perspective on the world. Art can foster understanding of other people's differences and bring people together. Racial, ethnic, and gender diversity is a recent development in the history of theater. In the early days of American theater, broad and grotesque ethnic and gender stereotypes were the socially accepted norm. The theater has to reflect the changing demographics because the arts play a critical role in people's perception of their society. Productions must engage with all images and forms of human existence. The Mosaic Theater Company reports that between 2019 and 2022, at least 40% of the U.S. population identified as non-white, 5.6% as LGBTQ, and 26% had a disability. To have their narratives told, diversity in theater must occur at leadership, staff, content, and audience levels. Most productions are written by white playwrights for white audiences and feature white performers. Women have fewer and lower paying roles than men, finds a study by the Asian American Performers Action Coalition. Like other institutions, the theater is in need of equity-focused reform. As an example, Latinos remain significantly underrepresented on Broadway. Of the roughly 51,000 Active Actors Equity Association members, the Union for Theater Performers, 3.1% are Latino. More Latino representation on stage, on screen, and behind the scenes in higher positions would benefit society in several ways. Better representation helps young Latinos see themselves portrayed positively and realistically. Stories written and told by Latinos can break down stereotypes of criminals, poverty, laziness, and a lack of intelligence. This kind of representation in the arts is vital in nurturing a sense of belonging rather than continuously being alienated as the other. Finally, diversity sells. Although it should not be the primary motivating factor for any performing arts industry, data shows that productions with more diverse casts draw in larger audiences. For theaters that have been hit hard by the pandemic, investing in DE&I may boost their reputation and box office sales. By embracing diversity and creating a truly inclusive and supportive environment for all artists, theater productions can achieve artistic excellence, social progress, and economic growth. Well, that does it for this edition of Three Questions With, a collaboration by Illinois Latino News and Can TV. I invite you to look us up on our websites and chat with us via social media. Tell us what you think about the topics we talked about today, and please send me suggestions about what you think we should talk about in the future. Because at the Latino News Network, you're more than just our audience. You are our contributors. Amugo Balta, thank you all for watching.